Alright, if y'all simmer down. We were just talking. We, we love hearing all this jibber jabber. It just uh, sounds good to our ears, but we welcome you to our regular monthly uh, school board meeting tonight. Uh, this time I'll call the meeting to order. And please note that all board members of the superintendent are present. If you would, at this time, would you join me just for a moment of silence, please? Thank you very much. If you're able, please stand and say the place of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. And we've come to the point where we adopt the agenda, but before we do that, we need to make an amendment, Mr. Would you explain the reason, please? Yeah, I think all of you have an, a, an agenda out there that's a misprinted agenda. And so just to make sure everything is uh, copacetic, we are going to uh, adopt an amended agenda. They have the correct agenda, and the agenda that you'll see here is correct. But just so you all understand <coughs> that that correction is being made, I'll ask you to adopt that amended agenda. All right. This time with the amendment, uh, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? Motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All right. We have a second. All in favor, let me know. But lift your hand. All board members were in favor. The agenda is adopted. Uh, item number two is communications, and one of our favorite parts of our school board meeting is recognition, Mr. Stowe. Our first recognition is the Danville Office Equipment Support Staff of the Month, and this month we are recognizing Ms. Katie Pointer from Camp Dick Robinson Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Pointer is an amazing asset to our CDR team. She is truly dedicated to our students and is happy to help in any and all situations. She's very flexible, always putting the needs of her students first. She has a fabulous attitude and a great work ethic. We're all thankful that Katie Pointer is on our team. Congratulations. Our next recognition is our whole latte love teacher of the month. And this month we recognize from Garrett Middle School, Ms. Shauna Garner. Ms. Garner is GMS's STEM teacher extraordinaire. She also works with the STLP program and with students to produce the GMS Daily News, update the website, and work on technology-related problems. One student says that Ms. Garner comes in every day with a smile on her face and a funny story to share. She's encouraging and supportive, and if you ever, like, if you ever feel like you need to talk to someone about a problem, she'll always be there for you. She's an awesome, kind-hearted person who can be there wherever you need her. Ms. Garner makes huge impacts on our students each day, and we're so lucky to have her as part of our GMS family. Next, we'll recognize our Farmers National Bank Students of the Month, and we'll begin with CDR and Bennett Wilkerson. Kindergarten is such a fun and exciting time in a child's school career, and Bennett has certainly made the most of his kindergarten experience this year. He's blossoming into an exceptional student and a wonderful friend. No matter the task, he gives everything he does his best effort and always finds ways to help others and to be a friend. 
We couldn't be more proud of the work he puts in each day and can't wait to see what all he accomplishes as he continues to grow and learn. Bennett is a joy to all who know him and a blessing to our kindergarten classroom. Congratulations, Ben. <laughs> Our next recognition is from Lancaster Elementary, and it's Kingston Gooch. Miss Sewell says this about Kingston. He is a model student in our classroom. How's your son? He works hard follows directions well and loves to read. In the past year, all of us who've worked with him have seen him grow and learn more every day. His growth in reading sight words and grade level words show that his love of reading is cultivating a love of learning. His learning is growing, his, his learning and growing is not just in reading, but in math and socially as well. We're grateful to be able to work with him as he grows into an exceptional student. Congratulations, Kim. <laughs> Our next recognition is from Paint Lake Elementary, and it's Anthony Gillum. Anthony is such a hard worker and always does his best. He's made great progress this year. He's also the first one to help a friend when they need something, and he is a great friend. He comes in with a smile each day and has a fantastic attitude. We're so lucky to have him in our class. Congratulations, Anthony. <laughs> Our next recognition is from Garrett Middle School, and it's Claire Weaver. We'll recognize Claire next go around. Our final recognition for Student of the Month is from Garrett County High School, it's Brooklyn Moore. Brooklyn is a very dedicated student at GCHS. She's always smiling, full of optimism, and always helpful. Brooke has proudly played in the GCHS band for three years. She gives her very best in everything she does, and hopefully will write a book one day entitled, How to Never Have an Argument with Your High School Boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she represents all the qualities of the world Congratulations. <laughs> Next tonight, we're going to recognize the Garrett Middle School Archery Regional Championship team. So if you all will come on up. The Garrett Middle School Archery team finished the 2022 regular season, having won seven of the nine tournaments in which they competed. They ended the season as the 10th region champions as part of the National Archery and Schools Program. The team followed up this performing performance, placing seventh in the state tournament in Bullseye out of 156 teams at the middle school level. Our 3D team also competed at state, where you shoot foam animals instead of paper targets and finish third in state. We'd like to recognize Austin Osborne, who placed first middle school male in the region and finished third place middle school male in both Bullseye and 3D at the state. And Abby uh, Fothergill, who placed third at region and ninth at state in Bullseye. And Kaylee Kobernick and Abby Bailey, who finished sixth and tenth, respectively, in 3D at state. The entire team has worked extremely hard all year, and it shows in the results. This team has represented Geary County and GMS with dignity, honesty, and integrity at all times. And thanks also to Coach Joy Fothergill for her efforts. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Before we walk away from recognition tonight, we're going to do one more that's not on your agenda. Uh, we'd like to recognize one of our board members tonight. Uh, Mr. Hurt, would you come up here, please? <laughs> For those of you who are not aware, Ken Hurt was just recently elected to the 12th Region Hall of Fame, and we think you all need to be aware of that. Ken Hurt worked at Gary, as a Gary County High School girls basketball coach from 1978 to 2003. He compiled a record of 443 wins against 274 losses for a winning percentage of six, 618. He recorded winning seasons in 21 of 25 seasons and won over 20 games on nine different occasions. He won 16 district championships, and he won the 1994 12th Region Championship, the only regional championship, basketball championship in Garrett County history. If that wasn't enough, he served as head baseball coach, assistant football coach, athletic director, and assistant principal for many years in Garrett County. We're very proud of Ken Hurt and his recognition at the 12th Region Hall of Fame. All right, item B is the South Page the decision making minutes, and uh, I trust that maybe all board members have had an opportunity to look over those. Uh, item C is audience comments, and we didn't have anybody that signed up for audience comments, so item B is board members' comments. Does any board member have anything they'd like to share? Y'all want to get through this? <laughs> well, there is one. I, I, I remember when the archery team, we didn't have an archery team. And I think there was probably three of us that were there on the night that they asked to have an archery team, and we approved it. And they had absolutely performed at a, a, a rate nobody could ever expect it, but they, they've outdone themselves. They've just done so well. And it's through a lot of hard work on their part, People that are working with them, and coach them, and take them to tournaments, and it's a lot of hard work, but they've really done well, and they deserve every bit of recognition. And I'm just glad that I was on the board when that happened. That's a, that's a good positive thing. Thanks, sir. You were here too, and, and this is Dr. Lamb was here too. Yes, that's right. Uh, Adam E. is superintendent. Uh, you have some things you'd like to share with us. We do. Uh, we shared with you last month that we were going to be having our elementary programs to share with you. So we're fortunate to have with us tonight Tracy Bottoms, who's the principal at Lancaster Elementary, Leslie Lawson, principal at Camp Dick Robinson Elementary, and Kia Lamb, uh, principal at Paint Lake Elementary. And one of the things that they uh, that we have decided to do this uh, go around is to make sure that we've allowed them to share together, uh, because we're working very aggressively to try to make sure that as an entire group. That we're working in concert with each other as opposed to in competition with each other. I don't think we've ever had this opportunity before where all three of the, our elementaries are presented at the same time. So this is going to be a, a neat learning experience for all of us and I hope it is for you. You have a one pager that we've given to you in just a second. I'm going to start a video that we'll be running that you'll be able to see as well. Uh, there's no sound with that. You'll be able to listen to uh, all three of our principals as they share some information with you tonight. All yours. So, um, starting uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, uh, we developed, started developing our curriculum adoption uh, with ESSER's fund. And so, uh, with that, we started off and decided that we would start with uh, math and science. And um, we started uh, with teacher leaders. We decided uh, with Mr. Stoll's idea to have teacher leaders in every building. And so we went through a process of um, electing, I guess, or deciding and uh, teacher leaders for each uh, content area. And they have, uh, they were decided. And so they helped develop our curriculum and are adopting our curriculum also. So we started with math and science. And as you're seeing the pictures, those are trainings that they have gone through and also led um, we adopted a science curriculum that um, met all three dimensions of science, and uh, they trained on those. Our teacher leaders have trained on that. And then our math also, um, we chose Eureka for that. 
which we had we had in the district already and some had already been using so we were able to uh, train we uh, with our math interventionists and leaders train on that also throughout the uh, summer but we're also with our teacher leaders we're able to train throughout the year and so with our purple days that we have and even on during um, PD time during excuse me PD time during our um, teachers planning time they're able to meet with them and especially with our math they have modules and so they meet ahead of time on the next module and plan that next module um, with each grade level so it's been a really good thing to, to have those teacher leaders and uh, especially interventions which Leslie will talk about also with that so um, with the teacher leaders they're able to um, meet monthly and Laura has been meeting with them and they come back and report back to the schools and they also have developed and revised and tweaked our, our pacing guides and have actually developed our curriculum maps and um, they create our common assessments also. So it's been a great thing to have to learn. Yeah. And uh, in addition to the teacher leaders, we also have our math and reading interventionist. Uh, at the elementary level and this year we have been fortunate enough to be able to push those into the classroom rather than it to be like a pull out um, and what we mean by push in is that they are actually co-teachers in the classroom and that reduces the teacher to student ratio um, and enables the students to uh, participate in small group differentiated instruction for both reading and math so that has been wonderful this year um, this also allows the interventionist to be like a partner to the classroom teacher uh, in order to discuss learning gaps, um, interventions, and next steps, uh, as well as create relationships with students so that they can specifically meet needs, um, especially this year after COVID. Um, the interventionists also assist with planning units. Um, they also help with adjusting curriculum, um, and using assessment to drive the instruction. Uh, this year, they have assisted with creating our assessments and even administering like our individual assessments. Like for reading, we use Fontas and Pinnell, uh, which is an individualized assessment. So they help pull students and do that while I'm in the classroom uh, and SNAP for math. So that's been very helpful to the classroom teachers. Um, they also provide guidance with our curriculum alignment and weekly planning. And we just feel like this has um, really helped this year with our master schedules. Um, it's really helped hold everyone accountable and pull everyone together as a team uh, working to meet the needs of individual students. So the other thing that we, is new to us this year is full day um, preschool. And um, so, you know, when I very first became principal all that long ago um, at Painlet, um, I was shared our kindergarten for grants data from last year. And um, overwhelmingly, it was not what we have typically come to know our data to be. It was much lower. And when I was looking at Paintlet specifically, one of the areas that really stood out to me was that we did not have a student population large enough to report in the category of students who were in either daycare programs or preschool programs prior to kindergarten. So our students weren't in any type of program um, prior to coming to us. And so I think that says a lot about that correlation to our data. And so to have full day preschool um, where students are introduced to so much um, just structure, but also you know, the important pieces, the social, cognitive, the emotional, um, the motor and communication skills. Um, you know, research says that communication and social skills are the foundation to learning, and that is exactly what they are getting. Um, and they are getting it in highly structured settings um, with phenomenal teachers. Um, we have had a student at Paintlick who I didn't know at the beginning of the year, um, but Ms. Congleton, and I talk about him often, um, who was uh, not able to speak and converse at the beginning of the year, and he will now talk to you in sentences. He will communicate. He will tell you exactly what he wants, um, and you know, is just thriving. And he is a three-year-old um, that we have gotten in with that early intervention, with that full-day preschool um, piece that 
um, you know, we just know it is making so much of a difference for so many of our students. And so we are so excited um, to have that full day preschool program and are so appreciative of having that opportunity for, I think it's 119 kids we currently have enrolled in the district um, in our full day preschools. So. So we also know that the needs of our students are changing. So we are together as a team thinking outside the box to provide additional social emotional learning opportunities for our students. Uh, so we're each going to share just a couple of ways that we're doing that. Um, at CDR, we have incorporated movement um, with our PE teacher. So we have um, been able to provide 15 minutes of uh, PE each day for our third, fourth, and fifth grade students. And we know that movement impacts academic achievement. So we're really putting a focus on that. Our K through two students get to visit uh, PE every other day now for 30 minutes. So we're trying to increase that time as we go. Uh, we're also increasing movement in the classroom so that students have the opportunity to get up and move so that they can focus better. Uh, a lot of students have ADHD or ADD, and this allows them to be able to focus um, and uh, be able to learn. So uh, another thing that we're doing is our Bobcat Club, and that's something that we offer on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, that's an hour and a half each of those days, and that provides a, another social emotional learning opportunity, a snack, movement, and um, a little bit of extra help with academics in the areas of reading and math. So we have found that to be very helpful um, and another way to support our students. And we have um, for a while now uh, had house club days. We had the um, we scaled back after COVID and we're starting to get them back uh, once a month. And these are where teachers serve as mentors for other kids. They're not their own kids that are in their rooms or um, serve as their classroom teachers or homeroom teachers, but. Uh, they get them, they might, they're house teachers, they may get them as kindergarten students and they keep them throughout their years until their fifth grade. And so you might see them, even as fifth grade, they've had them since kindergarten and you might see them conversing with them throughout the years or if they see them in the hallway or see them in my office, um, trying to talk to them and that uh, they sometimes rather talk to those, uh, their mentors rather than me. Um, so it, it, that's helped out a whole lot. We did that after a CDIP uh, meeting one time when we decided that every child needed a mentor, and uh, um, so we set that we set that up to be like that. So they every year they have that same house teacher, um, but then we also set up clubs to be something that maybe a student didn't have, um, something they wouldn't experience on a normal basis. So we have uh, different types of clubs that students are interested in, and they get to choose that club. And so um, that uh, we also have, uh, and we also have an SEL learning during the club. Dear, excuse me, during the house time. And so um, that's that may last maybe thirty minutes of that house time. And so besides the fact that we do that every day during the school day, we have that during that house time also because that's the time that a fifth grade student is also with a kindergarten student. Uh, we have that SEL time too. So during a house club time, um, all we do pretty much, we have a, now we're able to have our big, as you see on the on the video, we're able to have our, back to having our assembly. And what we do is just celebrate kids. That's what we do. Um, everything, we, we celebrate the characters. Um, we, we have a character trait every month um, and we celebrate Every, the teachers pick one of them, one of their students to um, with, have award them with that character traits and anything else that went on with the kids that we could find that month, we celebrate them um, and academic team or the cross country team, anything, we'll celebrate them. So to support the social emotional learning, um, we have the second steps curriculum available to all of our schools. Um, elementary and middle, I know, and so that's just a kind of like a specific curriculum that our kids are exposed to on a regular basis to help with that social emotional learning piece, to help our teachers 
instruct them on that social emotional learning <coughs> piece. Um, so it has been a very valuable resource that um, we're excited to have and to be able to implement um, because it's important for our kids to have that intentional instruction, but also for our teachers to know it, um, how to support them in that social emotional journey. Um, we have our full-time counselor at Paint Lake Elementary, um, which has not always been the case, but it's a huge asset to us. Um, with Miss Holland, she is doing wonderful things by pushing into the classrooms and teaching um, whole group lessons um, to support that social emotional learning piece or to support a specific need around inclusion um, and acceptance and just some really important lessons that we're excited about. But then she's also able to pull out small groups and identify kids based on need. Um, and it might be a listening group. It might be, um, you know, a kindness group or a grief group for our students who are struggling, but some really targeted support in small group settings so that those kids know not only that they have somebody that can support them, um, but that they have peers as well that they can lean on that, you know, might, might have similar struggles. And so just that whole encompassing social emotional learning piece um, that we have placed an emphasis on um, not only at Paint Lick, but I believe as a district, um, we are really seeing the benefit of for our kids in such a, a hard time when they are coming off the heels of COVID in such a, a you know, an inconsistent, um, you know, experience that they've had um, over the last couple of years. So that's been a huge support that um, we're really proud of. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I have a comment. Um, you well, I have, a, I have a comment and a question. My heart is full to see all three of you sitting there, three fine young women uh, as principals. And uh, when Mr. Stull was telling us that all three of you have reported on time, I thought, ooh, <laughs> I don't believe that's ever happened. Um, and uh, I say this lovingly, and I've said it to some of you, I said, you know, having three elementary schools is like having three children. And so there's always like a, you know, it's just, it's just, it's an interesting, interesting situation. And, and those of you uh, that have worked in district-wide, situations know that and it's okay it, it, it creates interest um two questions and i don't know that you really want to expand on these tonight but i think second steps and it's the one of the curriculum sort of fits into the bbis and, and of course our district has had a real history with that and at some point i would like to know more about where we stand with that i saw a lunchroom monitor happens to be my lip i saw her walmart today and i said she said that's all you still use the bbis and she really didn't know what i was talking about so uh, I believe in it. I think that was one of the things that we initiated and tried to initiate it district wide. It's, it's tough. It's tough to have district wide initiations on things, but it's a wonderful program. So I would like to hear about that at some point. And uh, also, as I was reading through site based minutes, uh, reading about the daycare, this happened to be, I think, at Paint Lick in the minutes. Um, and I didn't realize that, or not daycare, after school care. And I didn't know where we stood on that, but I think the number was large. And then it's a great, it's always been a great year because there isn't any community for us like Mr. Camp to have those. So um, at some point, we won't spend on those tonight, but I'd like to sort of hear where we stand with those. And the PBI is probably district wide. We're proud of you all. And I saw one little preschooler that was really focused. <laughs> <laughs> so that was encouraging. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. It. It's good to hear all this. So I think you can tell from this that you have three people who are working incredibly hard to make sure things happen, and they have an entire staff who's working incredibly hard, and you're very appreciative uh, of what they do. And this was a great opportunity for you to get to hear some things, and it does raise questions of things that you may want to hear more about. So it's a good opportunity for us. Um, when we roll into next year, we'll talk with you all about the possibilities of moving our board meetings back to our schools uh, on a rotation so that you actually get to be in that building and see what's going on. So we'll talk more about that. But thank you all for being here tonight. We appreciate that. Next, I'd like to share uh, something with you. Every year we identify a certain number of students who have to take alternative assessment. And in order to do that, uh, they have to meet certain criteria. And when you do that, KDE takes a look to see if you're